So you're leading a remote team and you're not quite sure how. Great, stick with me. We're gonna go over the seven deadly sins of leading remote teams. Hi, my name is Dr. David Arrington. I'm an executive coach and a leadership trainer. I help executives realize their vision and create sustainable change. And remote teams have become the modus operandi of most businesses today because of circumstances outside of our control. But here's the thing. Bad leadership is often hidden in co-located environments where you could just manage by walking around. When you're leading a remote team, you don't have that luxury and bad leadership becomes painfully obvious. So let's look at the seven deadly sins you need to avoid when you're leading your remote team. One, expecting constant access. No one can be on all the time. No one signed up for 24 seven, always available 365 day a week access. What it's gonna do is gonna overwhelm your people and it's going to lead them to burnout and you don't want that because then their productivity is going to tank. Two, expecting every interaction to be a video interaction. Again, we're leading people to overwhelm and burnout because being on camera, guess what? I can tell you a little bit about this. Being on camera is a different type of on. I spoke with one leader and she shared with me that being on camera 12 hours a day and all these Zoom or, or whatever conferencing solution you're using, it's, it's draining in a whole different way than getting up and walking from meeting to meeting. Remember, you can always use the phone. You can always send an email. Use video when you need to. It doesn't have to be every single conversation. And furthermore, don't get to the point where you're forcing your people not to use or to not mute themselves. Allow people to mute themselves just like they would on a conference call, just like they would in any other environment because they're doing things in the background and waiting for when they need to chime in. Deadly sin number three, not expecting conflict. Just because you're in a remote team environment doesn't mean that there'll be no conflict. It doesn't matter how your team is organized, conflict comes with developing a solid team. So when you are leading a remote team, expect the conflict, anticipate conflict, and be prepared to deal with it in a healthy way. Deadly sin number four, losing the personal touch. Never get to the point where you're leading a team. You're always leading individuals that make up a team. Each individual is going to need their own uh, special attention because they have goals, desires, they have deficiencies and strengths. So you wanna remember you're always leading individuals that are forming a team. Deadly sin number five, failing to keep training your people. Just because they're remote doesn't mean that their skill sets are constantly growing. You want to provide that constant personal development for each and every individual on your team so that they can continue to feel like they are uh, valued members of your team and that their personal development and growth is first and foremost, because that's what they're thinking about anyway. Where is this job? Where is this role taking me next? Deadly sin number six, failing to create a team. Now I told you earlier that you're always leading individuals, but you're leading those individuals so that they can become a team. Give them opportunities to engage with one another. Give them opportunities to become a team. Uh, when you fail to do that, you'll never get a high performing response. You'll, there'll always be individual team players uh, there, that do their part but never the contributors that understand the bigger picture. So you want to create candor and camaraderie, and you can do all of that in a remote environment. It just takes a little bit more nuance. Deadly sin number seven, and probably one of the worst, is fuzzy goals and objectives. If you don't know what they're trying to accomplish, and if they don't know what they need to accomplish, I can tell you right now, high performance will never occur. Mediocrity will be the best you can hope for, and furthermore, you're going to be frustrated because you'll be doing everyone's work for them because you've never taken the time to clarify what they need to do. So as you move forward, make sure your goals are clear. Make sure your objectives are clear. Make sure people understand what they're doing and how it plays into the bigger picture for your team's success so that when you're done, you're not having or you're not demonstrating any of these deadly sins of leading high-performing remote teams. So I hope this helps. Stay safe. Until next time, make today count.